National Geographic's Guide to the Yellowstone Supervolcano. This is on uh, Zero Hedge by Tyler Durden. Amid the growing swarm of over earthquakes, over a thousand in Montana's largest quake ever, scientists growing increasingly concerned that the so-called supervolcano at the heart of Yellowstone National Park could be building towards a Category 7 eruption. Well, actually, uh, in the year 2018, we had over 2,007 earthquakes. This is according to the USGS site on uh, Caldera Chronicles. But there are those who keep an eye on Yellowstone details, saying that there are much more than 2,007. That's an upcoming video. Now, on this, so what is the supervolcano, and what does its explosion mean for life on Earth? Well, this is what National Geographic explains in detail. Think of Yellowstone as a gigantic pressure cooker fueled by a massive supervolcano. Water from rain and snow melt, much of it centuries old, percolates through the cracks in the Earth's crust until heated by the molten rock reservoirs, the magma chambers, deep below. The water then filters upward, eventually finding release in the thousands of geysers and hot springs and other hydrothermal wonders. And if you see some of the videos that I updated yesterday, the day before, the geologists every so often are finding additions to the magma reservoirs of Yellowstone Caldera. At one point they found that it's four times bigger than they thought. Another research team found that there was a plate, the Pacific tectonic plate is lodged underneath the Yellowstone caldera as the point of uh, sinking towards the magma reservoirs underneath the North American plate. And also they found a solid sill between two magma chambers, one on top then the sill, and another one underneath. So the more they study this, the more they find. Eruptions of this supervolcano expel so much material that the crust caves in, creating a crater-like depression, of course, as we know, called the caldera. And Yellowstone is known as a supervolcano because of the violence and the size of its explosions. The plume of hot rock has been calculated at more than 600 miles in depth, but scientists suspect it actually descends as far as 1,800 miles all the way to what's known as the Earth's outer core mantle boundary. The reservoirs and plume are superheated, sponge-like rock holding pockets of this molten material, the magma chambers. The reservoir's heat, which originates in the plume, is what keeps the area's geysers boiling. Ancient rain and snow melt seep down to just above the volcano's magma chamber, the reservoirs, until they're superheated and rise again through the fractures. Volcanic heat and gases help propel the steam and water towards the surface, where they escape to what we see as hot springs or geysers. The hot water rises from a deep reservoir into a teapot-shaped chamber. This is the geyser chamber. As water and gases fill the sealed space, Pressure builds, preventing boiling. Some water spills into the spout, releasing pressure and allowing the water in the chamber to boil. Steam and water then blast up the spout. Now pressure builds behind a narrow constriction until steam shoots through and some water splashes out, then jets of steam and water explode, rising on average 130 feet. As the chamber drains, the water chamber of the geyser that is, pressure drops and the process begins yet again. The highest recorded eruption was 184 feet, eruptions per day about 17, and minutes and length of eruption one and a half to five minutes. The park's hydrothermal features cluster in basins at the margins of lava flows or near the faults. Rivers and streams are heated as they pass through these basins and the heat and escaping gases are also evidence of the subterranean forces that lie below Yellowstone. Now concerning the, the escaping gases, although it's not a volcanic eruption, these gases are toxic with sulfur and uh, 
a lot of areas in the Yellowstone National Park are seen with dead trees because of this. Now, so how would a supervolcano eruption at Yellowstone impact the regional ecosystem and the U.S. more broadly? Well, as the American Dream blog's Michael Snyder points out, it would be nothing short of catastrophic. Hundreds of cubic miles of ash, rock, and lava would be blasted into the atmosphere, and this would likely plunge much of the northern hemisphere into several days of complete darkness. Virtually everything within 100 miles of Yellowstone would be immediately killed, but a much more cruel fate would befall those living in major cities outside of the immediate blast zone, cities such as Salt Lake City and Denver, Colorado. Hot volcanic ash, rock, and dust would rain down on these cities literally for weeks on end, and in the end it would be extremely difficult for anyone living in those communities to survive. In fact, it's been estimated that 90% of all people living within 600 miles of Yellowstone would be killed. Experts project that such an eruption would dump a layer of volcanic ash that is at least 10 feet deep, up to 1,000 miles away, and approximately two-thirds of the United States would suddenly become uninhabitable. The volcanic ash would severely contaminate most of our water supplies, and growing food in the middle of the country would become next to impossible. In other words, it would be the end of our country as we know it today. The rest of the planet, and this would especially be true for the Northern Hemisphere, would experience what is known as a volcanic winter, a nuclear winter, an extreme period of global cooling would take place, and temperatures around the world will fall by up to 20 degrees. Crops would fail all over the planet, and severe famine would sweep the globe. And in the end, billions could die. So yes, this is a threat that we should take very seriously. And just in conclusion, we know that the U.S. government has an agreement in place that the Yellowstone evacuees would be relocated to southern countries, countries of the southern hemisphere, and this first batch of an agreement is up to 2024. So yes, uh, they do have an agreement. I don't know how many people have been informed of this, but you can see that in one of my past videos. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.